Good morning, traders. This is Chris Buss, your host over at Traders Profit Compass, with your morning look at the markets for Tuesday, July 28th. What I want to do this morning is look at the short term charts of the indexes. Uh, we had some uh, significant moves yesterday. Then I want to jump into the gold miners uh and then some of our open positions and bracket trades that we have set up so let's get going yesterday uh spy uh opened with a strong candle up to our key resistance level at 323 uh hovered there for a couple hours before pulling back and then made a steady ramp into the close breaking above um this key level at 3, 323, uh, turning the chart bullish. Now what's interesting, uh, we have a technical target here of 324.75. That was reached in the pre-market and now we've pulled back. So it'll be interesting to watch this open. Um, if price can hold uh, 323, uh, it keeps the chart bullish. Uh, traders can be long against it, looking for a move back up to that 324.75 level. If, however, price breaks below, back into the trading range, it puts a, somewhat of a bearish bent on the charts because that would make this look like a uh, false breakout. So I wouldn't uh, be shy about uh, putting on a short position if price drops below 323 with a stop just above um, and see if there's uh, further selling pressure that comes in. Um, so anyhow, your key level to watch today is 323. Bullish above, bearish below. Let's move on to QQQ. Um, I was really surprised at this yesterday. Uh, I was thinking that uh, there would be more sellers than buyers heading into the FOMC and uh, all of the big cap earnings that are due out Thursday after the bell. Uh, I was proven wrong on that. Uh, like SPY, there was a strong opening candle which hovered and then dropped back down and then had a very strong uh, back half of the day where price took out this uh, key pivot level of 259. Um, but again, in the pre-market, price has come up to tag 262, which was our technical target for that breakout, and has now come back and is flirting with uh, this 259 level again. Uh, just like SPY, uh, if price can hold 259, it keeps the chart um, near-term bullish with a target of 262. But if price drops below 259, that's uh, uh, short-term bearish. We do have this open gap that was formed yesterday. Um, if selling comes in, we may go down uh, to fill that gap today. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But if price falls below 259, again, that's going to make it look like a false breakout. And I would be, uh, if I was sitting in a long position, I would be real careful if uh, price drops below 259. So key off that level. Anything above 259, in my eyes, is bullish with a target of 262, but on a drop below, I would uh, be leaning on the bearish side for active traders. Moving on to IWM, uh, we've got a little trend line that's formed here off of the recent lows, and price has come down to test that uh, twice, and it's held. And we had a strong uh, 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 closing ramp yesterday to this pivot level at 147.50. Um, that's your line in the sand. Above is bullish, and I'd be looking for 149 to 150. 
uh, below, however, especially if there's a break of this trend line, I would be getting bearish and looking for a move down to 145. Um, one thing I've been looking at for seems like a couple weeks now is this big $3 gap below between 145 and 142. So any if you're not short up here, if for any reason price breaks below 145, it's definitely a place to get short and look for a gap fill down to 142. So near term today, 147 is your pivot point. Anything above is bullish. Looking for 149 to 150. Anything below 147.50 and especially below the trend line, I would be leaning bearish and looking for a move to 145. Moving on to the gold miners, uh, I spent a little bit of time on this this morning over on the blog, but the charts of gold and silver are getting that parabolic look as everybody piles in. And as I noted uh, in the written notes, you know, when the mainstream media picks up on gold and silver, I'm talking the nightly news, and you've got uh, William Devane from Roslyn Capital every 10 minutes telling you that's where you need to buy your gold and silver. Uh, it's generally a warning flag and combine that with the parabolic looks of uh, gold and silver. I'm expecting a, a pause or a pullback here. Um, if you're in this GDX trade, um, I would certainly be raising stops and uh, raising your strikes if you're in options. Uh, we've got a gap here back to 42, which is near-term support. I wouldn't be surprised to see this pull back in here um, to take a breather. Uh, and if you've been piling in this whole way, I want to make sure that, you know, getting paid is part of your plan. So I'm not saying to close out all your position, but I am saying raise your stops and raise your strikes. Roll and protect. Make sure you're getting paid um, and half expect a pause or a pullback into this 42 area uh, which needs to hold or 39 here comes into play with a pullback uh, to the 20 EMA. So be cautious here. Um, take some chips off the table. It's okay to stay long. There may be you know one or two more pushes but I certainly wouldn't be you know, piling in at this point. Moving ahead to some of the positions that we have on, we're long XRT uh, against 45 and a half. Uh, it's holding its breakout, holding its ADMA. Uh, things look good so far. Uh, Papa John's Pizza, we had gotten long on the breakout of this consoli $10 consolidation range. We've met the technical target here at 95. Um, like all of our winners, I've recommended that you uh, roll your strikes higher if you want to stay in the stock. Uh, raise your stops. Um, we've gotten the meat of this trade so far. Uh, it's fine to stay long. We do have earnings around the corner. I don't have that date handy, but you should be aware of it. I'm going to be out before earnings. Um, I always recommend that, but if you want to roll the dice uh, with a, you know, with a, a long shot into earnings, that's fine. That's up to you. But if we break this level higher, above 95 de decisively, I think you're going to see price go up and uh, tag 100. Um, but make sure you're uh, stops are tight and you've rolled your strikes higher to take uh, the meat of the win off the table. But it's been a great trade so far. Uh, looking for more, see how earnings treats it. 
FedEx has been another uh, nice win for us. <clears throat> we had the big gap up on earnings. Price hovered there for a couple of weeks. I know a lot of you got long here against 155. That's great. We got a move up to take out this key resistance level at 163 where it hovered for a few days and we got a nice 3% move yesterday. Uh, UPS has also been strong. So those guys are, are moving up. Trade looks good. If you got long in this 155 area, I would certainly be moving up my stops and my strikes uh, up to this uh, 163 area. Uh, if there's any pullback uh, below, I would be exiting the trade. Um, if you want to play it even tighter, you can move your stop up to like 167.50, halfway up uh, yesterday's candle, and look for a push higher. So that looks great. Chef was a name uh, that we identified this big uh, bearish descending triangle. I got an alarm yesterday on a break of 12. Late in the afternoon, uh, it did recover that level. Uh, earnings are very close. It's either at the end of this week or first part of next week. I decided just to let it go uh, and see what happens at earnings. But on a break below 12, there's quite a lot of downside in this measured move. I would want to be getting short um, for a bearish trade, looking for a move back down towards uh, $8 um, coming out of earnings if it breaks lower. Jamia is a name we've been long. We've been getting jacked around on it. We entered about 850 once it took out this key level. Uh, we got a fast run up to 1075. Then they announced uh, a secondary, which knocked it back. And it's been grinding higher uh, for the last couple of days, up near $10. Earnings are next week, uh, or the 12th, I think. The earnings are August 12th. Um, I'm going to be out for that. I am still in it. Um, still long August 9 calls. If we get a push towards 11, I'm going to pull the ripcord and then pick it up after earnings. But there still remains uh, a lot of buying pressure, absorbing that news of the secondary, uh, pushing higher. I'm looking for a move back up towards $11 prior to earnings. Uh, and that's where I'd be exiting. Uh, Yeti. We got long on this breakout. It hasn't done much, but it is holding uh, the uptrend line and the breakout. Uh, it hasn't violated any of our stops. So I remain long uh, August 45 calls. Um, I need to check the earnings date on that. Uh, and you should too make sure uh, that you decide what to do. Uh, heading into the print. I will be out no matter what. So hoping to get a run into earnings uh, where we can close a nice little win. As you know, we've been talking about bracket trades. Uh, we have one set up on Intel. We got the 17% down move. And then yesterday we had follow-up selling. We're right at the line of violating that bracket. Uh, I want to get short on a break below. Uh, I think given the poor outlook for Intel the second half of the year and this technical violation uh, of the bottom of the bracket, I think there's a good chance uh, for a move down into this, you know, zone between 45 and, and 47. I don't expect a, f a fast move, so I'm going to buy at least a couple months of time on this and just let it, you know, dribble lower uh, with my stop 
uh, just above back inside the bracket if price bounces you know back up uh, take the trade off so anyways this is a setup that will likely trigger soon uh, you should have it on your radar best buy we have a bracket set up here between 99.50 and 95.30 uh, it's still in its bracket I plan to follow this one either above or below the bracket for a gap fill um, so that setup is still active uh, same thing on uh, Cena except August 5th is earnings um, I'm gonna let that pass before uh, making a move this gap up was on news we've got earnings around the corner uh, once earnings is cleared I'll reassess uh, either following this one out on a breakout or down uh, for a potential gap fill so that one is still active uh, yesterday there was a break of uh, um, what is it carnival cruise lines below this key support level I did uh, take a small short position just two weeks out I am in August 7th 14 puts uh, I just have one contract so it's not really a big deal but uh, watch cruise lines watch airlines those uh, uh, value cyclical stocks looks like they're starting to break down to me um, if you've got you know a number of long positions it might be uh, a good place to to put a little hedge on some of these that look like they're breaking down I think this could go down into the you know the 12 range uh, relatively soon if you know the COVID stuff remains hot and uh, I just I just don't see these guys uh, doing much between now uh, and the end of the year if price breaks back up above this 1425 level I just kill the trade uh, but it's a short-term trade just two weeks out uh, at that time we'll see where we're at see if we want to roll out lower or just take profits um, one last chart for you this morning uh, IBB we had identified uh, last week that 135 was a key spot to mark on your charts got a nice bounce off the 50 EMA here uh, bounced up 2% yesterday to close this gap if any of you went long there that was a great trade now let's see how it handles uh, the 20 and the 8 EMA uh, going forward but if you're long stay long uh, if you're more bearish keep an alarm at 135 uh, for a potential break below Anyhow, that's your morning look. We've got some really clear lines on the indexes to watch. Uh, watch Intel today. Uh, keep an eye on your open positions. Um, make sure your stops are at appropriate levels. Um, if you're in gold, silver, or any of the miners, make sure you're harvesting profits, rolling up your stops and strikes and don't get hung out to dry uh, if they pull the rug on those uh, parabolic moves make sure you get paid anyhow um, I really appreciate your time this morning uh, there's a link in the show notes uh, for you to jump over to the blog and get filled in on the rest of the detail this morning uh, there's a place where you can register at tradersprofitcompass.com I publish content six times a week at least. You'll get all that content uh, delivered uh, to your inbox. I'd really appreciate if you subscribe. Uh, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. 
Um, this has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Have a good trading day.